This guy is like the Justin Kabelka of Bearded Dragons. Dude, this thing right here is just insane. He just showed me some four, five thousand dollar Bearded Dragons. And it's basically a, a selective breeding line of uh, genetic right? What's up guys? How are y'all doing today? Hope everyone's having a great day. Man, as you guys can see on the thumbnail, dude, these are some crazy, insane bearded dragons. And for you guys, if you guys don't remember, um, when I actually started, you know, before I started the whole, you know, ball python craze, we actually had a lot of bearded dragons. As you guys can see, like, in the beginning of my Instagram, I was breeding bearded dragons just for fun because we've always loved them. I never knew that there was these type of bearded dragons. So we're over here with Magna Dragons, with my buddy Manuel, another friend that you know, uh, Hector from Union Pythons introduced me to, and this guy is like the Justin Cabelka of bearded dragons out here in Mexico. The biggest and rarest breeder uh, for bearded dragons out here in Mexico, and it's so freaking insane, man. I came in here and it was like a kid in a candy store. He also has a lot of uh, geckos, but, and iguanas, but trust me guys, with the bearded dragons he has here, Dude, it's, we just want to see bearded dragons. So, um, Manuel, come here real quick. This is the guy right here, the mastermind behind all this craziness. Um, real quick, Manuel, um, obviously he has mag magnet dragons. All his information can be on the description down below. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, I've been breeding bearded dragons for around four years. Four years? And uh, I really like the species and I thought I was just gonna... I, I always, as a kid, I always had a dream of living from these. Yeah. So, uh, uh, like, my parents would tell me, no, it's not possible, you, you're just dreaming. Oh, okay. it's definitely uh, possible. And, and it reached a point where I was producing some of these the first, the first time, which was back in 2018. Yeah. And I started selling them. And my, my dad was actually surprised. He said, hey, if someone's buying like $200 animals from you, yeah. then it must be good. So little by little, I started adding new genes, uh, new morphs and stuff, and, and well, it, it turned out what you can see nowadays. I thought bearded dragons would go up to like $500, $700. He just showed me some four, $5,000 bearded dragons I'm just completely blown away with. Um, real quick, do you want to, so, so right here, these are a couple of your juveniles, right? Um, or not even juveniles, correct? Yeah, they're, they're babies. They're, they're babies. They, were, they hatched a couple weeks ago. Uh, these are citrus lines, which are yellow. They yeah. tend to go from yellow to orange. Uh, m most of them, I would say, they range between 150 to 300 dollar tops. They, they they tend to be more uh, cheap. If yeah. You, if you want to say it that way. And what about the bottom ones right here? These ones are red lines. Uh, they. Here we call them, a friend saw them and he's like, dude, these dragons are actually red. He's like, they look like chamucos. Yeah. Chamucos. Chamucos is a slang for a... Uh, for devil here for in devil. Mexico. So basically we call them chamucos out of a joke, but uh, it's it's a red line. A red line. Yeah. These are all babies that also hatched a couple weeks ago. Uh, these lines are uh, very, very, very red. Put it back right there again so we can put it very red when they grow older. So uh, it, it, it's the, the babies need to be raised for a few months before you can sell them. I was, you do not want to sell something that turns yeah, out to be yeah. a surprise, right? Yeah, you can have, I, I've seen it nowadays. Uh, there's some babies that have hatched that look totally normal and then you wait six weeks and you're mind you're blown like, by the color. You're like, damn it, why did I sell it? Yeah, uh, some people they're like, look, do you remember the dragon you sold me a few weeks ago? And I'm like, shit, I shouldn't have sold it. <laughs> so what about right here? What do we have right here? Do we have another mixture of stuff too with the red line? Yeah, uh, we also have some mixed red lines. Uh, these are juveniles now. Uh, from here, I'm only keeping these females, which is... Now, what makes you want to keep these females? Is it the color? The color, the structure. Uh, you want to make sure that the dragon is healthy, has a neck, it can stand in, in uh, four legs. Yeah. And so overall, it's, it's a mix between color and structure. Uh, I've seen a lot of people breeding dragons that are really red, but they're horrible with their body structure. Yeah and you need to make sure that you're doing that well uh, also. Now, okay, so you're obviously known for the red monsters. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, my buddy Hector kept on calling the red dragons. <laughs> so, so could you show us some like really good lines of like red dragons that you have that you're just like very happy to have in your collection? So, red monsters range from- Red monsters, damn it. <laughs> red, red monsters range from, from uh, like a dark orange to like a very dark Can we brown. go more to this light over here? That we could come a little bit more. I want people to really see this. Yeah, of course. Okay, perfect. So, so they range from a, from a dark orange to a dark brown. And that's what basically how you price them. A, a dark brown or dark red, as people call them, they're worth around $4,000, $4,500. Uh, it's a line that comes from China. 
and it, it became really popular uh, around a year ago. A lot of people are uh, being mind blown by the color. Here with bearded dragons, it's really common. I don't know about snakes, but people would post the dragon and you would buy it overseas and they will show you pictures that they looked extremely red. Yeah. And when it arrived, surprise, it's orange. And you were like, dude, like I just bought this really expensive dragon that didn't turn out the color I expected. When Red Monsters arrived, it was the total opposite. Everyone didn't expect wow. to see these when they arrived. Yeah, I honestly, I'm still blown away. And well, it, it was like a boom. Uh, Right now in Mexico, I think we're the only ones working with them. We had our first clutch hatch uh, a week ago. Dude, this thing right here is just insane. We have uh, six of them. You have six red monsters? We have six red monsters. This is a male. And uh, we're hoping to produce, I don't know, 50, 60 babies throughout the year. Do you have a waiting list of people wanting to buy these like crazy? Uh, actually, I hope that whenever you're, you're, uh, you're I can talk about the business. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's already gonna be on there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was. I'm hoping that whenever you guys start to export and import it. Yeah. I. So these are these are high end dragons, and yeah. I mean in Mexico, not as much people in in the reptile business get since it's growing, starting. Not everyone goes for the extremely high end animals. No, they go for the fun stuff just to you know be able yeah. to have them and play with them. That's that's how I started with my you know with my pythons. So so yeah, I got a few people interested in them already here, but I'm also looking into exporting them. Yeah. So uh, hopefully if you guys get that done yep. soon. It will be done really soon. Some some travel around the world from here also. <laughs> no there's there's another red one here that I fell in love with. But you said it's not a red monster. Yeah, she comes from the again the the chamuco or red devil line. So the red so chamuco is that something you that you made up? Is yeah, it's, it, yeah, okay. it's total it's total uh, like <laughs> Mexican made. Yeah, I love if, it. If you, now, yeah. like to me again, like I see this and I'm like again, it's very beautiful. But then I see this one is just like a lot more clear, like just more vibrant. But you would say you're comparing like what four thousand dollars here to like two thousand dollars, right? Yeah, around something like that. Uh, well, as I as I said, this one is new, so of course it's going to be more pricey. Yeah. But yeah, if you if you if you put them under under the sun, the the chamuco line is going to be brighter. That is just unreal, man. Now, okay, so we always we already know that you're working a lot with the red monsters. Now, you're also showing a couple of other stuff that are called blue bars. Blue bars, yeah. Oh wow, have you tried crossing these two together? I'm working on it. I, I'm hoping to get some of the dark color with, with blue. And how cool it. would it be to have blue right here behind these? I, I, I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but I really hope it works. Now, a lot of these ain't really um, recessive genes or anything like that, right? It's, uh, it's, a, it's selective breeding. Selective breeding, right? So, so the Red Monster line and, and that one, blue bars, the blue bars actually come from, from the US, from Texas. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, they, they are basically colors. When I say colors, it's, it's a line, it's a, it's a color that, that came out after breeding them generation after generation. Mm -hmm. So basically you have to imagine yourself having a, a, a normal bearded dragon and then, I don't know, 40 years into trying to get the rest, you end up with something like this. So it's a really, really, really long, long time, long to, time get to get this. This and one is a line called Thunderbolt. And it's basically a, a selective a breeding line of a genetic stripe, uh, citrus, and some other stuff in it. This one also came from, from uh, China lines, actually. So are you gonna get into snakes at all, by any chance? Or I, you're have, just... I, have I have reticulated pythons. Oh, nice, nice. They're not here anymore because uh, my wife is making me downsize. Oh, that's uh, right. Uh, but actually, um, your, some of your snakes went out to um, AR Constrictors. Yeah. We've done a video with him before. Yeah, he, he, I work a lot with him. Uh, he's he's uh, my friend and partner, we have a lot of stuff. Yeah. And uh, basically all my, my reticulated pythons are with him right now. Nice. Now, um, there's another one that you brought out here. Talk kind of, we're talking about scaleless snakes, but you're saying with this thing, um, could you, could you um, repeat what you were saying that way that yeah. people could hear? Yeah, um, beta dragons have uh, the, the gene that's called, the morph that's called uh, leatherback, which yeah. is basically, it, it's, it, it feels like leather and it reduces the size of the scales. The problem is that when you breed a leatherback to another leatherback, you get silkies or scaleless dragons. Yeah. And then, uh, as you know, scaleless reptiles tend to do horrible. Yes. They're not nice pets, they have a lot of health issues, and they overall struggle to live. So 
This is a recessive leatherback, which means that if you breed it to another one, you're only gonna get leatherbacks. It does not produce silkies. So I'm hoping that to add this morph into other lines that I have here, so I can try to, to work with leatherbacks without worrying about producing Maybe getting like a nice this. silky, like a red monster? Uh, I want to avoid the silky, <laughs> but, but I mean, yeah, it would be something that I, I don't think everyone, anyone has produced it actually, a, yeah. a silky red monster. So, and okay, so another question too is, how much uh, clutches do you have here a year, like a year? Um, I don't know, I, this year probably had like 30, 40 maybe. 30, 40, so you had oh, hundreds of babies in there. Yeah, I, I, I can have more. The thing is, bearded uh, dragons are so pricey to raise. They, yeah. they go through thousands of roaches and feeders overall that, that you just reach a point where you're like enough. And, and, and that's I, what you were saying, you were doing selective breeding because you just want to make rare powerhouse stuff instead of just making a bunch of yeah. you know cheaper you know yeah 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 since since they're so so pricey to feed you have to focus on the yeah. nice stuff so you can keep on growing without worrying about hey my feeding expenses are so higher. yeah so are you going to be growing this facility more than it already is yeah yeah i hope that if, if you guys come around again around six, six months from now maybe even less the this is going to be three times bigger maybe wow now now manuel of course you know um you know um seeing the whole reptile market grow right now i always ask everybody here out of mexico what are the things how have you seen the growth in the last two to three years uh it, it grew a lot it's, and it's, it's been and, like crazy and right? it's growing faster uh before you would see people uh thinking they were buying pricey reptiles for $200 and they thought it was a high-end animal. Yeah. And right now, you, especially with bulk pythons, I see a lot of friends like Hector just going nuts with the, yeah. with the, the snakes. Union pythons. <laughs> and, and it's it's really cool because uh, when when we were starting this video, we were saying that most of us dream about living from these yeah. seven points. Yeah. And it's starting to seem uh, to look more possible, possible here in Mexico. Doing it, yeah. So I hope that in a few years, uh, we can reach that point maybe. Yeah, no, it's definitely getting like that. I mean, again, man, I really, really appreciate you guys, you know, inviting us over here to see this crazy stuff. I mean, there's just so much freaking drags we could go through. So, uh, Manuel, um, again, thank you very much for, you know, a lot of us coming over to see your crazy stuff, your beautiful stuff. You know, I hope, you know, this gets a lot bigger and you make even crazier stuff so you can okay. sell me since we're going to be a recording, you know? But, uh, <laughs> guys, go check out all his uh, information. It's going to be on the description down below. As always, man, we appreciate all the support. Until next time, peace. <laughs>